Okay, I think that's good. Yeah. All right. Hey, hey guys. So I'm here with Vintage Magic, and we're gonna talk a little bit about his business model, which is different from mine. If you want to uh, see the video about my business model, uh, <laughs> you can go on his channel. It's pretty interesting. So let me. Well, ask my business you. model is very simple. I don't. Uh, How much so percentage do you put into your business? I don't buy 800 Thalias and uh, 9 million wallet shelves. Well, no, it's not. I'm just kidding. I, I'm, I'm, sorry, a few hundred, I'm sorry. A few hundred. Narwhals. Narwhals. Yes. Yeah. So when you have some high end cards like this one, which is 400 plus thousand, how do you find the clients? Uh, yeah, let's show the uh, Lotus, the PSA Lotus. PSA 10. We'll, we'll actually pan through here in a minute. Yeah. So, yeah, like a PSA how do you 10. Find the signing? card. Yeah. And then how do you find the people who want to buy the car? Right. Because it seems so high end. It's like, it's. Two of them, right? So yeah, two of them. Yeah, so you are the only video I've ever done with uh, how the business works. So I'll give you the exclusive. Let me just, I just want to be a little bit, making sure this is like oh. in a sideways angle. <laughs> okay, high quality productions. Yeah, so um, I get asked all the time, how, how does the business work? Or there's a lot of guessing, how does the business work? Um, first off, I started uh, collecting baseball cards and stuff mm. when I was a kid. So um, I actually started a company where I did consignments, uh, brokering deals, high-end baseball cards um, back when I was in uh, engineering school. So uh, I have a mechanical engineering degree. Uh, so I started that when I was 19 years old. Oh wow. So at 19 or even before that, I already knew I didn't want to become an engineer, even though I had the brain to do it. I didn't so want you to were in college when you first started your business? Yeah, in terms of sports cards and yeah. memorabilia. And I was like, you know what? I enjoy sports. I enjoy uh, relationships, uh, you know, like when I had uh, presentations for engineering, uh, I was the person presenting because I was the most outgoing and spoken. You know, like I, you know, I was, I was, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like, I enjoyed that part. Um, so, I, I always knew I wanted to do something other than, um, you know, something technical. So fast forward to what I was doing now, um, I did some corporate America stuff, you know, in between that and, and corporate sales. And then in 2009, I officially created the Vintage Magic. Uh, it was named a couple different things like gradedmagiccards.com before, but now it's called vintagemagic.com. So the idea of the business is very simple. I'll make it very simple. We have a slogan, it's called Game, Collect, Invest. On the play mat, yeah. Yeah, game collect. And the reason, the reason why it's Game, Collect, Invest is because we as Magic players start out gaming, we love yeah. opening the cards, cracking packs, I'm just like the same as you guys, drafting, uh, playing you know, you know, with friends on kitchen table, and we grow up that way. Second thing we start doing is collect. Everybody collects in different ways, maybe artwork, high end grading cards, misprints, decks, legacy, vintage, modern, doesn't matter what you do, we all collect these cards and have binders full of cards. <laughs> and we're absolutely, we're all the same this way. We're also uh, very anal retentive towards the way we organize our cards. We have a certain way, we like to collect certain things. Like you like Thalia, I mean you have like 800 of them yeah, for yeah. some dumb reason. So for the, the, for the altars. For the altars, altars. Yeah. But, but the, the reality is though, you have, you collect certain things you like. Yeah, of course. And so then we have the invest. And the investment part is probably the more uh, part where everybody who's a collector, actually, I always question, say, are you actually an investor? Mm -hmm. You're actually more of an investor than you think because the reason why you're buying the Thalias um, was for an investment idea. You told me that you're buying it for your Patreon to potentially sign. Well, that's Nor Norway, Norway, yeah. Norway also, Far, whatever, yeah. right. So you have other ideas that you're doing, but you think as an investor because yeah. you from financial terms. You want to make a profit on right. you're, you're thinking profit. A true collector doesn't care about money. No, yeah, they, they don't just care, care about mostly money. about obsession with uh, their collecting. For example, the PSA 10 Alpha Sign Lotus was actually uh, bought by a collector. The oh. guy is an uh, investor of many other things, but this particular piece, um, he would gave me cash and trade that was wow. insane. Like some people, people would be like, so the, there was a Beckett 9.5. Uh, Black Lotus, Alpha Black Lotus, that sold for one hundred sixty-six thousand dollars on eBay. Basic sub rates. But why would someone pay four hundred thirty-five thousand for a one of two signed Christopher Rush, Rush Lotus, where signed cards are not necessarily favored compared to unsigned? Cards? Correct. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. The guy is a collector. Yeah. As a collector, the guy really appreciates signed cards. In fact, 
he traded me a quad plus alpha black lotus uh 9.5 bgs 9.5 and cash so more, more than the one more, that just recently sold. oh way yeah. more that was substantial probably over what? 300 something thousand dollars plus for this that card alone and and gave me uh six figures plus of cash just for this card so the, the combined value this card could be worth even more because and, the quad plus is actually worth more and than it does more. matter because you can't get this autograph anymore right so to this, this card yeah. right so this collector uh, it's actually in my uh, video. I can give you the link of it. It's the, yeah, mil yeah. the million dollar oh, collection. The million dollar. Well, I, I saw the video. Yes, it was, it was more ago, my, right? my better yeah, produced video. <laughs> Whereas the million dollar collection, where this client cared about sign cards. Yeah. And people actually go crazy over sign cards. The whole point of what the business though is that um, I think Open Boosters actually made the best video the other day. Very specific. Uh, Open Boosters is the guy who opens all the packs. Yeah, yeah, I, my good friend Dan in Orlando. He said the reason why, if you want to be successful in magic sales, is one reason. You know the answer is the buyers. The buyers. It's knowing the, the buyers or finding the buyers. Okay, being able to once find you them. find the buyers to the MTG crack, it doesn't matter what you do. The reason why this business exists is not because Daniel's making up the prices or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's because there's actual people physically giving me money, wiring money, whatever, to buy these cards. I'm in Houston not to visit Tony. I'm in Houston because I'm visiting a client to drop off this card. That's the reason why I'm here. It has nothing to do with, you know, I enjoy barbecue, right? So Austin is better for barbecue, right. by the way. It is true. Yeah. Uh, so what I realized is that it, people are wondering what the business is, is that I connect uh, person, I connect personal relationships. Basically, my business model like is, a broker. You're, you're a broker. Yeah, my business oh, model is very right. different than Star City, Channel Fireball, uh, all those other Which companies. Which is volume. Is, is I'm volume. all about relationships. Tony and I had breakfast. My friend Simon, he's hiding. Come here, Simon. He's an old school. Old Come here, school. Simon. Simon and I, actually, all of us, we're going to go to Asgard Games yeah. to play old school here in a, in a bit. But we're going to go play, meet some new friends, and that's kind of what I, how I do it. You see my videos. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, what you see in my videos, is it exactly the same thing yeah, we're doing? I, I, yeah, absolutely. It, 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 it's it's so, so from what you guys see, like Daniel's an asshole, Daniel does this, or Daniel does this, <laughs> it's, it's not true. It's, it's, it's yeah. absolutely stupid. It's like Daniel's here because he wants to show like some of these artifacts to some of the old school Yeah, guys. this is amazing because... Yeah. Like some of this stuff, underground C. I mean, when is the next chance you get to see it? So I'm really happy. Daniel didn't need to bring this here. I didn't bring any. He didn't have to bring any of these because he's not selling them right now. But it's uh, it's fascinating because you're when you we talked before. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. A long time ago when I was starting my marketing company, and I don't think you you came very far. I think that was 2000. I was growing. Yeah. I was growing my business. No, no. I mean, I was still doing it. No, I knew you were doing. You still yeah. had that website. That, yep. Um, Know, the vintage magic website yeah. you had that up because i looked at the website but it wasn't like robust it wasn't like yeah stuff, like you're yeah. doing now that i see on you know i added we added these all on facebook the other day right, 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 right. <laughs> and yeah. I, i'm looking at this i'm like wow yeah and but part of it also is i'll be perfectly honest is that since from 2017 2018 i mean even 2015 2016 2017 2018 let's do some simple math here look at the prices of an alpha black lotus as just one yeah. card Look at the prices of old school, all those cards. Yeah. An Alpha Black Lotus, let's say a BGS 9.5 back in the day. I was trying to beg people to buy it for $30,000. Yeah. I was begging, like, Tony, take my card. No one would buy it. Now, $166,000 for some ridiculous, in 2019, some ridiculous, some ridiculous, like, reason. If you look at the bidding history, there's like 10 other people, 15 other people that want to pay 100 so. k want to pay 100 k so the reality is people will say, well, is it a bubble? Is it inflation? Sure, it's, it's definitely, I think, the reality is that magic nostalgia, kind of like what you said about tech, uh, Bitcoin maybe, yeah. um, you know, wealth, you know, uh, investments, people getting inheritance. Money has grown, uh, the wealth of America, wealth of the world has grown more. And now you see a transfer of assets into high-end art collectibles and you know, stuff like that. So that has allowed me to grow my business exponentially and obviously give back to the community, do, you know, do more events, have time with my family, travel more. But it also has given me, you know, from all that freedom, I, I'm able to do all those videos. You know, yeah, I'm able content, to share, yeah. share all that too. So it all, it all came about where 
the business model has now become instead of just being, uh, you know, like hustling for, you know, I used to, you know, one, one thing I used to do, which I totally think is awesome uh, for people that are doing it, is helping friends get signatures from artists. They I wait, they wait in line to get signatures. I used to charge people like a buck or something. And I was, you know, I know there's a, a guy named Mark Aronowitz who does that now as a full, full time yeah. thing. But I actually did that before with some clients. They yeah. said, hey, here's 500 cards. 200 cards. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and the, I would, the ones that you don't take it to and, a GP. And I would, have yeah. it, it, it would help. It would help me monetize back in the day my time to go to some of the shows. Now my time has changed. That makes sense. It's yeah. changed. So the whole point I share that with you is that it's become a business of uh, different margins to now massive spreads um, that are you know. And I'm not going to reveal the the profits, but let's just say the profits have changed dramatically. Right? We're talking from uh, a normal type of job. To uh, to become retirement level, right? Big big money right? over the past few years. Oh yeah, yeah. The past few years. And the thing is, the question is, well, is it a bubble? Is it going to change? You know, whatever. No, because be what's going on is these are becoming magic artifacts. Uh, they're they're yeah. becoming like historical items, and people just don't liquidate historical items. That's the thing. Tony, any, any other questions? Yeah. So, what determines the price of? Obviously, we have time lock, counter spell. Um, I was actually talking to uh, vintage. Magic about Counterspell, I was surprised by its price yeah, also compared to other cards. So obviously, you know, Underground C, that makes sense. Time Walk. Um, what determines the price of an artwork? Is it really just a buyer's market and a buyer kind of says, this is how much I believe a Counterspell should be worth? Or like what in your experience would make an artwork like this one worth less than the skeleton ship? <laughs> <laughs> I, pirate ship pirate from ship. Alpha. Yeah. Um, uh, original Tony said that was the skeleton yeah, ship. Yeah, no, from it looked the like it from the dark, yeah. But it's Tom Warner it's Strand. The same was guy. There, yeah. the same, so the answer to your question is very simple as this, guys, and I'll pan through some of the arts and cards. The reality is, this is probably worth another video by itself, is the art of pricing high end. Yeah, the, magic, the art of pricing high end, high -end magic how do you collectibles. Know this is worth. So let me answer it. So the art of pricing high end magic collectibles, like even like Simon's awesome. Uh, 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 alpha. miscut <laughs> alpha lightning bolt, absolutely amazing, oh, real, yeah. real. The, back, yeah. the reason why uh, this is so hard to price, it's kind of similar to like this. Yeah. They're very similar in the sense that they're one of one, very, or maybe there's, maybe there's another one out there, but it's hard to price. There's these little, these rarities, these niche things, uh, these artifacts are super hard to figure out. So what I do actually, is not go to eBay completed sales. <laughs> I'm not going to. Um, yeah, eBay, please. I, I'm not. Yeah. So a lot of people, what they do is they go to eBay completed sales, <laughs> and they look at an underground C. <laughs> What's this worth? Yeah. yeah. And they go no, no. Well, they look at an alpha lightning bolt. They go to eBay completed sales. And say, hey, okay, you sold this on this day, correct? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with one of one collectibles, beta starter deck box, alpha uh, alpha starter deck, whatever it is, right? How do you find the price? This is what happens. This is the art. Okay, I'll give you my biggest trick. You ready? Okay. You guys ready for the secret? This is true. Okay. Okay. I don't really put a price. What I do. You take offers? This is what I do. Just listen to what I do. I don't say, hey, look, Alpha Island. I want 100000 for Right, let's say, no, I'm just making a <laughs> That's a good price. I was like, yeah. No, 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 that, that's actually really cheap. <laughs> yeah, that's very cheap. Yeah. The thing is, what I do is I build a relationship. Mm -hmm. I first, what I do is I talk to you. Yep. I speak to you, we Skype if you're from overseas, whatever. I build a relationship. I don't talk about price. I sell on the V word, value. Yeah. I sell myself, I sell the relationship. I say, hey, you want to play some games of magic? Tell me why you like art. Tell me oh, why you like Oh, I see. Yeah. The, the value sell, and this is what I, probably the, the thing I learned in corporate America the most, in corporate sales, is you never sell on price. You sell on price, you lose on price. Now, obviously if someone says, right to it says, I just want to know the price. Obviously you give the customer what they want, but you do it in a way where it, you give them a very high price, right? Mm -hmm. But where, the, where you know a customer is serious is they don't just talk about price. They talk about how much they love it. This collector really liked sign cards and doesn't really care about what you know what it is. He just wanted a signed Alpha Lotus. In the video that I showed you guys that was done, 
The one million dollar. There, there was a quad video. plus Alpha Lotus. That is the one I got in trade and money. The client didn't want an unsigned one and it was willing to just go crazy on it. Doesn't really matter. So my whole point is that it was about like I asked him, why do you like it so much? Why do you like sign cards? He goes, because it, it makes me connect with artists. Oh wow. It's more rare. It, it makes you feel like there's a spec it's more special. It's almost like yeah. Picasso or some famous painter basically holding that piece of artwork that's been printed in, right? So the whole point is every collector is unique, but never sell on the price. That's why when you see Channel Fireball, Star City, all those other websites, they have a price. It's hard for people to un to buy those things sometimes because there's no way for them to hold it, to understand it, to have a personal relationship. For That's me, true. for me, it's a very unique experience. I come here with different collectibles. It doesn't matter if you're not going to buy anything. I don't care if you're yeah, buying I mean, it at all. Yeah. It's, it's a relationship. It doesn't matter. If Simon probably would they never buy anything from me. He may buy something from me, but it's the experience and the relationship that what makes me different from every other vendor or trader. Yeah, it's true, because you didn't, I didn't even know what you were bringing. I knew that you were bringing some exactly. artwork, but I didn't know like what you were bringing and it would be this high end. Yeah. I knew that you were bringing the mock sapphire, but not like the underground sea or, so it's. People ask me why, why do people buy and pay the prices and why do people do this stuff? It's a relationship. Yeah, I didn't know this was as beautiful as it was until right. I saw it and then maybe you know, I'll be like, Daniel, I want something a little cheaper, but something kind of like this. Bingo. And I would love to add it to the office, right? Um, right. Because now something it's- Something a little bit in your budget. Within yeah, right. my budget. You know, you might be seeing things that you, so when you deal with like hiring cars, I, I, talk, I don't want to use car sales as, a, but it, it's a good analogy. Car salesmen, they tend to sell the highest model, the best features. Because you give the buyer the, Kind of the drooling effect. People yeah. buy their eyes. They show them what they could have. And by the way, I share I share with you guys these secrets. They're not even secrets. Actually, the, the word secret doesn't mean anything. It's just <laughs> stuff. I'm doing exactly what other salesmen, other relationship sellers do all over the world. It's all about execution. It has nothing to do with, um, you know, it's, it's not a secret. You know, being a lawyer, being a doctor, all those things, it's already been done. I mean, people have been that. It's about your execution. How do you become, how do you do that? So my brand, who I am and all that stuff is execution. And here's the other thing is that when I say I'm gonna do something, I do it. For example, I told you, meet me here. We're gonna look at some stuff. Yep, yep. Games. What did I say, Simon, right? <laughs> yep. I, 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 I didn't dilly dally. I didn't waste people's time. I value people's and, time. And you trust people. And I trust because, yeah. because actually, you went to the bathroom and left Simon and me with probably, what was it, $4 million? Well, probably more than that. Yeah, $4 million dollars of yeah. you know, artwork and stuff. Yeah. And it's like. Well, well, the thing is, the thing is, I mean, I wouldn't do that with everybody. No, no, I know right. that, but it's true. The, right? the, the, the main thing is, you have to look at also, now there's a, there's a scope. Like, if I took all this artwork, put it back and wrapped it back up in the bubble wrap, and then went to the bathroom and came back and unpacked it. It perceives to two, two individuals who could, who could be clients yeah. that you don't trust them. But here's the trick. If it's two strangers that one, one is a, a YouTuber. Who has a <laughs> yeah, yeah. Has, and the other thing is Simon is a lawyer, right? By degree. And he also is a lawyer in general. You have to pre, as a salesperson, you have to predetermine, you have to predetermine your buyer. No offense to the people of Humble, Texas. <laughs> you're not going to be leaving your, your cards to with them. But it also builds trust, right? I'm sure Simon feels the same way. It's like, oh, hey, Daniel left this. He must at least trust us. Well, I'm not going to leave you with, I mean, so one thing I don't do is I don't leave my old school decks out. Ever. Oh, yeah, of course. That's stupid. I never leave my, like, say, hey, pull my backpack, <laughs> <or> <laughs> the GP, <laughs> and then really grab it. my backpack. And, you know, and, yeah, and then people steal it. I never do that. The reason why is because those are micro little cards that can easily be switched out. Not, you always, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, you always don't trust in the sense that you always want to believe that they're, they're, people are trustworthy, mm -hmm. but you also want to have a sense of, hey, they could do something, right? So you know, I only leave my, my personal I my items with really good friends or family that I've known for years who can handle them well. But in the case of the artwork, we're at a, another, a high-end hotel, and then you have two individuals that I've kind of, 
you know, in a way, I've interrogated, like, you know, not interrogated, but I've, I've built, you know, I, like, I didn't really interrogate you guys. I kind of just yeah. got to know you, and if I sense at all, like, this is one thing I say in my videos, if you smell a rat, if you smell a rat, it is a rat. If there's any sense of, like, sweatiness or fear or, like, <laughs> like they're, they're trying to maybe potentially steal something because maybe they're broke, they're financially, you know, they're complaining about money, you realize that those people are desperate and they True. need to. So people that want to steal from you, by the way, people that are understanding about theft, those are people who are desperate. They have a reason to steal. If you meet people that are professionals, have kids, Simon has kids, right? I have kids, have no reason, he has you know, cats or whatever. Dogs. No, 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 narwhals, dogs. narwhals, <laughs> dogs, whatever. Dogs, dogs, yeah. you know, whatever. They're my kids. I mean, there's, 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 there's um, a reason, there's something to lose, right? You could lose everything. Yeah, true. So anyway, so when you entrust your collectibles, so I do consignments, that's another part of the business. Oh, yeah. I do appraisals, insurance appraisals. I sell, grade, I grade the cars, I buy collections, stuff like that. People trust me with their collections um, from all over the world. Like that doctor who sent the 100K worth of cards I just did a video of, he just sent the cards to me, no contract. Not, not nothing, just an email saying, hey, I'm gonna do this, it's my work. He realizes though, Daniel has more to lose than this hundred thousand dollars. That's a business. That's right. A business. Right. That you can... Now I can easily afford to do a contract. Some people do, and that's fine. But the whole point is that I have more to lose than this collection or this thing. And it's hard to comprehend for someone that, and no offense to people that might play standard or modern or legacy. MTG smaller, Arena. So, yes. Smaller cards, right? Yeah. It. These are, you know, it's it's it's, it's a different environment. Okay. Oh, thank you. And yeah, I'll yeah, put yeah. a link to your channel. Yeah. And we, I made, you have, you have some videos of me, I have some videos of yeah. Daniel. And yeah. yeah. But does that make sense? Like, oh, that makes sense. It's yeah. about relationships. It's about, you know, hey, um, I mean, he's very good at that because we're talking about cards I like. And we had actually talked about that many years ago. And we found out it was all digital. So unfortunately, we couldn't right, buy right. it. But um, that's okay. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I really love this. I know it's. A yeah. million plus. Well, there's but a, my gosh, I love it. I love there, it. It's an underground scene. There's a play map that Rob Alexander has done. It's hand painted. I can't imagine, but it's it's not the same though. No, no, no. It's but not the same. But you can still frame it. But the thing is, are you going to spend a million dollars? Probably not. I mean, right? if I made it, yeah. So, so my, my whole point though is, what you could do have a nice piece of art is you could either get a play mat that's hand painted. Find an artist, yeah. Yeah, or you could also have a nice clay or 